What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment on these videos. It really helps a lot. And you can check out the previous playlist from the other videos right up here. In this video, we're going to discuss the path that the putter takes through the ball, which is the other dimension that we did not discuss in the first putting video, which we can check out here. But today we're going to talk about the other dimension of putting, and that is the path that the putter takes through the ball. We're going to look at a couple of different methods of stroking the putter or the path that the putter would take. We're going to divide these into two sections, essentially straight method and an arc method. So for clarity, I'm using this alignment stick to designate what straight would be. And if you could keep the face square and move it along the alignment stick, the ball essentially would travel exactly straight with this alignment stick. A straight back path is not an easy thing to accomplish with the design of the putter. As you notice, the putter goes down at an angle like this, so the putter is not straight up and down. If the putter were straight up and down, we could go straight back and straight through more easily, but the putter's not. The rules of golf don't even allow it to be. It has to have a certain angle. So because we're at an angle, when we move this putter to move it straight back, I would actually have to move the handle straight back also the shaft itself to go straight back with this putter, which is extremely difficult to do. So in other words, to move the putter straight back with your target line would mean that you would have to negate the fact that the shaft is, is going at an angle and manipulate it so that you're actually moving the putter away from you as it goes further back. Anytime you rotate a shaft about a point, some kind of fixed point, or even a mobile point, it will create an arc. So you see, if I turn this thing back and just turn my body, it arcs backwards in a, in a piece of a circle or a piece of a curve. It's arcing. And this is going to be the most natural way to move the putter because of, the, of its design. It's gonna be very difficult to move the putter straight back. If I were to want to move it straight back while I'm turning my body and moving the putter, then I would have to push my arms away from me so that the club is working away from me in the backswing to stay straight. And not only that, I would also have to close the club face as it goes back to keep it square because when you move the club face back on an arc, the club face will naturally open and close just like a door. So if it moves back on an arc, it's going to open slightly, and then when it goes back through, it'll close slightly. And this is a normal uh, repercussion of moving the club on an arc. The club is not actually opening. It's always going to be perpendicular to a tangent line. The face angle, anyway, is going to be perpendicular to a tangent line of the arc. So because we want to try to minimize the moving parts, of our putting stroke to minimize errors, I do not recommend trying to move the putter face straight back with your target line. That would involve too much motion of your arms and wrists. Instead, I promote an arc swing where the club is going to come slightly inside like this and the face will be somewhat, it will seem open, but it's actually square to the arc. And then coming through, it squares itself again and then going back through it will close itself up. So the stroke would you know, look something like this, where here it goes slightly inside, which is actually on the arc, the face is slightly open, and then it comes closed, squares at impact, and then goes slightly inside again with the face at the same angle this way, slightly closed. So we're going to explore specifically arc putting, not straight method putting, because I deem it to be simpler and easier to accomplish because of the design of the putter, because the putter is going at an angle. When we swing it back, it's going to arc some coming back this way. I'll show you this way. If I, as I open the putter, the face kind of opens up some, and then when I go this way, it squares, and then back this way, now it's slightly closed to the target line, but it's actually square to my arc. The face angle, I'm not actually rotating the face angle like this any. We'd want to minimize, no matter what, in our putting stroke, we want to minimize 
the face angle rotation because of what I showed you last time in the last video about the necessity to be exact with your face angle when you're aiming so that it'll send it down your target line because just one degree is quite a bit of error when putting. So we don't want to try to involve any of this kind of rotational motion in our putting stroke because that will increase our errors. We want to essentially stay straight all the time and keep the face straight and move our body without actually turning the face. Okay, so now we're going to discuss the different methods that you can employ to move the putter back on this path or preferably an arc. It doesn't have to be an arc. You can try to use it straight, but I'm going to cover it from the perspective of an arc because I deem that to be the best. You can look at videos of golfers from the 20s and 30s in Bobby Jones era and you'll notice that they putted with a lot of wrist action. Uh, the strokes were very much like this. The rest of the body was rather still and it was very much just a, a wrist hinging motion. Not much body involved, but very much very wristy. And I think this worked well for that time because the greens weren't then what they are now. The balls were not what they are now. The putters themselves, the technology was not what it is now. And specifically, I think the grass was just a lot thicker and hairier and bumpier. And the wrist action, popping the ball, hitting the ball tended to work well then. You don't see a lot of that stroke anymore in tour players or in professional players because I just don't think that, that, that the wrist action is conducive to the speed of the greens today. It may work very well, however, at your local course. So keep this in mind. So this is why we've seen the use of the wrists, a lot of wrist and putting fall by the wayside. This, this technique is not really much used anymore. Moving on to the modern day technique of putting, which looks something like this. As in the fundamentals that we've covered before, arm straight with the shaft, and the stroke would look something like this. And I'll show it to you from the front view in just a second. And this probably looks pretty standard of what you see, the way that most golfers do it. This is what's known. Okay. And we have to explore exactly what's happening here with the body to understand better what muscles we're using to achieve greater consistency. As you know in putting, if you've ever putted uh, or played golf for a reasonable amount of time, you know how frustrating putting can be. And a lot of times you, you don't know where the ball is going to go when you hit it. And the slight variables, some, you hit it and it seems like it went this way or that way and you don't even know why. Everybody's familiar with the yips. So we're going to explore some of these things and try to mitigate or minimize them. When you look at this putting stroke from this angle, it looks like I'm just turning my body, but I'm not. In fact, if, I were to, if I'm going to stand up here while doing the same motion, and you'll see exactly the way the body is moving to produce this type of a stroke. So you can see here, as I stand up more, that the motion that I'm doing there is actually like a, a shoulder dip, a left dip, right dip. So I'm moving like this, which is actually kind of hard to do. It's a lot harder to do standing up than it is over because now it, it, it works a little bit better like that. But nevertheless, this, this is the motion that we're making and putting using that method. And I don't find this motion to be very natural for me, this, nor do I find it to be very consistent. My experience has led me to believe that this is probably not the best way to do things because rotating would be much better, but we're not able to rotate the body with the way that the putter is designed. The reason we move this way is because the putters are designed with this particular shaft angle. 
And when the shaft is angled like this, we're pretty much relegated to having to hold the putter at that angle. If we change the angle, then it picks the toe up or puts the heel down, which we've already discussed is not optimal. So when I have the shaft at this angle, you'll notice that when I put my forearms onto the club or my hands onto the club with my forearms relatively straight with the shaft and I take my stance, you'll notice that the shaft is very upright compared to my body. Uh, the shaft is not shallow at all. In other words, the angle of the arc that I'm making is this angle, my body with this angle. And when I rotate this shaft now about this angle, you can see that the club goes very much inside. If I were to just turn my body and not rock my shoulders, not this motion, but turn, you'll see that the club goes very much inside, way inside. You know, this is not really usable for a putt because, I, I, you know, how is this going to work? That, that would never work, okay? Because the shallow, the angle is too steep and the arc is too small. It's a very small circle. So because of that, the design of the putter, we have learned how to putt by rocking the shoulders. And by rocking the shoulders, this allows us to push the club head backwards, straighter down the line, only slightly inside. Or even we can even push it all the way out by pushing, dipping the shoulder. Notice that motion there. I'm having to dip my shoulder to push the club head back. So essentially, I'm dipping my shoulder my, from here up. I'm dipping that portion down. When I dip it down, it, it leaves the club head. It allows me to negate the fact of turning. I'm not necessarily turning. I'm just dipping down, rocking my shoulders, bringing it back. But again, this motion is not a very easy way to move your body. It, the body doesn't move very well like that. It doesn't feel nearly as simple to me as this would be. Rotating my spine this way as opposed to rocking my shoulders. So the reason we have this technique is because of the design of the putter, which forces us to have to rock the shoulders to try to keep the putter head somewhat on the path and not too much inside somewhat straight down the target line. Now obviously a lot of putters have found great success putting with this method and this is the standard modern way known to putt. So I'm going to show you a different method uh, that I call gut putting which is I think an improvement on the modern putting technique. So this putter that I'm holding this is a classic answer ping putter a ping answer. It has not been modified or bent. It's standard. It's stock. It even has the stock grip on it that you can see is all crusted and uh, baked. <laughs> Looks like it's been baked, sun baked. It's an oldie, but it works. This is not the putter that I use. I use another putter, which I'll show you in just a minute. So contemplating what we've seen before that if we have a very steep angle here, and that, or rather that my arms are low to meet this angle, when I rotate my body, the putter would come straight inside, which is not preferable for putting. It would be very difficult to putt like this. We want to keep it kind of straight with our target line, but it needs to be on an arc. And an arc can seem straight if it's big enough. Consider the surface of the Earth. The Earth is a spheroid, so it is curved, yet when we stand here on the surface of it, it seems like it's flat. We thought for a long time the earth was flat because it's, the curvature is so large that it seems like it's flat. So a larger arc is going to give us a straighter path. If we were to move a very, very big arc, then when I made that same rotation, in other words, if my radius of my arc were longer, then it would be much straighter. And in contemplating this, I thought, well, the biggest I can make an arc would be if I went from this angle of my arms to when I, if I went from this angle and moving here, which is a very small circle, to moving 
here where my arms are coming 90 degrees out from my body. Now when I make this arc, this is a much bigger arc than this one. And this arc will allow me to keep the putter face quite straight and use the putter like this as opposed to like this. Rocking the shoulders, which is weird. Using the putter like this seems to me to be more effective through my experimentation and practice than this motion. There is a problem, however. So once I, my setup would look something like this. Putter face, I make sure that the putter face is coming straight out of my side. My arms are essentially at 90 degrees of my body. To maximize my arc, I want my arms straight out from my gut. We're essentially going to like John Wayne with your two guns. We're going to grab the putter like this, attach our grip, and have our arms coming straight out from my gut, straight out from my side. Notice that my arms are slightly forward. They're not right at my side. They're a little bit forward, not all the way out, but just slightly forward. And notice here that the putter is pointed straight at my solar plexus, straight to my center. When I putt here and turn, I'm putting from my gut, from my center. That is where the putter is aimed and that's where I'll move from or attempt to move from this center. This gives me great stability in turning just from the center. Having an idea that you're putting from your stomach, from your gut is also very helpful. Having the club pointed straight at you and this makes this easier to understand how to move the putter because now we don't have to consider this angle that the putter is at this angle to my body. We interpret things very well if they're either parallel or perpendicular. Even 45 degrees is understandable, but the easiest is having things at right angles. We're used to this. So having the putter coming straight out at, from my stomach produces a 90 degree with my body and also a 90 degree from my axis of rotation, which is going to be my spine now. I'm not going to be dipping with the shoulders. I'm going to be rotating from the spine. Okay, so we go in the setup, the putter is coming out of my solar plexus, and now I want to approach the ball. So when I go to approach the ball, put our grip, make sure the putter is flat, straight out of my gut, and I really just judge that the shaft is parallel with the ground. I don't want it too high, I don't want it too low. Just pretty close to level, parallel with the ground. I'm standing straight up, so it's coming straight out of my gut, straight with my forearms, and we go down to the ball. And you see that when I put the club down on the ground like this, the shaft angle is much shallower than the putter designed to be used. So that means the putter, the toe of the putter is way up in the air and it would be very difficult for me to putt like this. But you can see, even with this happening, that when I just turn my body, the putter goes relatively straight back, and straight back is on the arc. The arc that it makes is not like the arc that it makes here, where it goes straight back, or straight inside, way inside. With the arc at 90 degrees, now it goes, it, it's usable now. And now I'm putting not like this, but like this, which is totally different. Instead of putting like this, using a shoulder rock and tilt, a dip method, now I'm putting more like this, using a rotational method and not a dip method. This has enabled me to make many more short putts and hit them consistently because I can keep the face straighter like this because I'm just using a rotation and not a dip. So there's a caveat to using uh, my method of putting and that is you're either going to have to be satisfied with your toe of your putter being up or you'll have to bend it so that the putter will be flat on the ground. So this is the putter that I actually use. This is the ping answer. And you can see when I put them flat on the ground that 
this putter, this one with the blue handle, with the blue grip, is much shallower than the ping. So that way I can grab it with the angles that I want and the putter is still flat on the ground. So we're going to put the ping away and I'll show you what it looks like to set up with my putter. Now I set up the same way and approach the ball and now you can see that my angles are straight. The putter is coming at 90 degrees from my stomach and now I can just rotate my body like this to bring it into the back of the ball. And this arc that's created because I've maximized the size of the circle by increasing the angle, bringing the angle down from here that we're putting from to here. Now when I turn, I've got this huge circle to use and that arc is for the most part straight enough to hit the ball pretty straight so that it's not too sharp. Difference being trying to putt like this and turning my body where the club would almost come back around my foot. But like this, we have a much bigger circle. And now I, when I turn my body, the club will still pass relatively straight. It's, it, it's a, the arc is big enough so that it's straight enough. The path through the ball is straight enough to keep it going down the line. From this angle, it would look something like this. straight, approach the ball, so here you see I'm turning, which is different from I'm making this motion to stroke the ball and not this motion, which is the dip. I'm not doing this. I'm doing this, which is a completely different way to use your body to stroke the putter. And it really is only possible by increasing the size of your circle or increasing the arc by bringing your hands at 90 degrees to your body. And then you can begin to experiment with this. If you have an old putter, you can try it. Um, I've had to bend this putter down for me about five and a half degrees flat so that I can get the angle that I want out of it and be able to hold my arms at 90 degrees from my body and the putter face still be flat on the ground. I found that it took about five and a half degrees to get it down where I wanted. This is just a recommendation. You might want to try this, have an old putter, bend it down, and check it out for yourself. So we're going to finish covering the three dimensions of putting. We talked about two of those dimensions in the last video, and here we're talking about the other one and adding to the loft. We're also going to talk about the angle of attack on a putter. When I swing this putter back and forth with the technique that I just showed you with this, my arms at 90 degrees out, when I swing this putter back and forth, you'll see that when I take it back, the putter is off the ground that much. It's not because I picked it up. It's because the arc has led it there. If I continue turning, it goes higher. So because I've rotated backwards, the putter has come off the ground some. And when I go back to the ball, the putter goes back down. And then when I go through the ball, then the putter goes up again. Just like a pendulum. So the putter is going down and then up. So your angle of attack is something you need to consider when you're putting. Because the path is going to go like this and we're rotating it out of our center, then my ball position is going to dictate whether I'm hitting the ball at the bottom of the swing or whether I'm hitting the ball on the upstroke or whether I'm hitting it on the downstroke. If I were to place the ball at the bottom of my arc, then I'm going to be hitting the ball at the bottom of my swing as I go up. 
if I were to play the same ball in the front of my stance, now when I take a swing, now the ball, the club head is going to be on its upstroke when I hit the ball. So if I play the ball forward in my stance, I will be hitting the ball more on the upstroke the way we would hit a driver. Conversely, if I put the ball in the back of my stance, now when I take my swing, I will be hitting the ball more on the downstroke, hitting it down into the ball. It's preferable that you impact the ball either on the upstroke or at the bottom of your arc. We do not necessarily want to hit down on the ball. That's going to push it into the ground, and we discussed what happens when you push the ball into the ground. It's preferable to hit it slightly upwards to get it on top of the grass and then rolling onto the surface. One thing to consider on your angle of attack is that we definitely don't want to just pick the putter up very high and drop it down onto the ball. Shallower angle of attack is definitely going to be better. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out two of my other videos here. Subscribe down here, and we'll pick it up next time with a little more on the stroke, tempo things.